This is made without mods. And so is this. And this. And even this. Building a park in Jurassic World Evolution 2 is even better when you know how to exploit some of the game's strangest, best hidden glitches. If you're looking to build even better parks, this is the video for you. I've covered many game changing glitches on the channel in separate videos. This video is a full guide to all the best tricks and glitches with updated tutorials for each. I'm going to walk you through step by step so you can recreate it in your parks. For all of the best park building tips, tricks and inspiration, subscribe to the channel. The first that I'm going to show you in this video is actually the most recently discovered one and it makes our lagoon builds a lot more interesting, which is something our lagoons are definitely in need of because Frontier did not give us a lot of tools to incorporate this more uniquely and more interestingly in our parks. Now, a little bit of homework to do before you start using this glitch and incorporating that however which way you want is you need to check which decorations work with the terrain tools. So, for example, flags, um, signs, uh, all foliage types, planters, these move up and down with the terrain. The same with rocks. I should add a rock as well. Rock. Then we grab the terrain tool. And you go up and you can see that the items go up. That's not the case for every single decorative item. For example, shipping containers and um, these wall pieces, they do not react to the terrain. So before you decide on how to, how to proceed with the next step, just check to make sure that the items you have in mind actually move up and down with the terrain like these do. One thing I find really helpful is to grab a contrasting terrain brush and outline this rounded edge of the lagoon, which is the, the end that we're going to be working with. This is what we're going to be decorating. Once you've done that, the next step is to delete that part of the lagoon. And now we're going to raise up the terrain and we're going to do so quite generously. This is key for, for the glitch to work. Basically what we're doing is we're getting the hitbox of the items that we're going to place above the upcoming or returning lagoon section. And we're basically tricking the game into thinking that there's not going to be any hitboxes hitting each other. So the first example that I'm going to show you, like I said, is a natural edge to the lagoon. And how you do that is, you know, whichever way you want really, whatever your vision is, but if you want to make it natural, it seems only logical that it would incorporate a lot of rocks, so that's what we're going to do. While doing this, you want to stay either on top of the tall plateau that you created, or when you go down, you want to test it occasionally. So let's say, for example, we place a rock over there, grab the lagoon section, and see if it's still blue. If it's still blue, then it's still going to work, so we're still good. So what you might want to do is grab that contrasting terrain brush again, and with the terrain contours turned on, you can you can draw that in a bit and let's let's give ourselves some margin of error by doing that. And this allows you to know that you know as long as I stay within that white line, it's fine. My lagoon is still going to be able to come back in, which is obviously very important. Can't have a natural edge lagoon without a lagoon. So I've placed some rocks and not being too delicate or too thoughtful with it right now. Now we're going to place some foliage as well, which is really going to help a lot. Now, something that you want to be mindful of actually is that some items work a little bit differently with the hitboxes. Not all hitboxes are created equal. So this bush, for example, still works at the same level as this rock. But let's say if we were building something else right now, if we put a planter right there at the same level as the rock, and now we were to try to bring it back in, you can see that the planter does have a hitbox with the lagoon. So that is, again, something that you need to periodically check as you work. All right, here we go. I've added a lot of stuff for my natural edge. I'm gonna grab the lagoon section again. I'm gonna hold it right there. You can see it's still blue, so we're going to place it. And as you see, all of the items just drop down, the lagoon placed without issue, and they are now over the water. Now, thanks to uh, a comment from Cretaceous Containment, we now know that these uh, floating bushes 
can actually really easily be solved. You can see right there, they're just hovering above the water surface. To make it look a little bit better, we actually want them to touch the water surface. So we're going to grab the lagoon, uh, sorry, not the lagoon, the terrain brush, uh, lower, and we're going to lower the terrain. And there you see them going down. And now you see that we have a really convincing, I think this looks really, really nice, really, really natural. Uh, let's see how far down we can get them. So I'm going to dig as far down as I can. Honestly, from, from the surface, this looks really excellent as well. So I quite like this. It is from below the surface where this is going to uh, get a little weirder. But yeah, from above, that looks super, super nice, actually. I'm pretty happy with that. So that is how we can create a natural edge. On to the next example. Editing Evo here. This video is such a huge project. It is such a huge time investment. So if you're enjoying the video, if it's helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps me out. All right, I'm, uh, I'm gonna get back at it. The next example that I want to show you using this trick is we're going to be making uh, kind of like a rock cave kind of aesthetic, which just means that we're going to be placing as many rocks as we can squeeze into this area. And then from below, it's going to look like we're inside a cave. There, grab our lagoon. Bam. Now this you know, from the top, it doesn't look too bad, but this is more from below. There, that looks pretty spooky. And just like imagine your marine reptiles swimming around in here. You can also, which is pretty fun, grab the attraction, the underwater viewing dome. You can still place that under here, no issue whatsoever. So if you get under, there, that's, pr that's pretty neat, right? The next example uses the same principle, but this time we're going to create a fake guest bridge. So what we need to do first is see how low we can get our planter. So I'm going to test it here. I think this is still too low. That's definitely still too low. So we're going to get higher. So we're going to pause it, delete, and then we can see from the dust clouds where the item was. So it's easier to like inch it higher up this hill. All right. So the planter, as you can see, needs to be really high in order to be able to work but we have our, our sort of guideline there. We have our mark of how high it needs to be. So we can hit play again. Let's make it a little bit easier for myself to work with. I'm going to lower it back down. So we can't get any closer to the lagoon edge than this. Obviously you can like try to emulate a bridge however you see fit. There is a limit to the, the items that you can use. As discussed, you need to use items that move up and down with the terrain. So personally, this is what I've come up with that I find pretty convincing from a distance. But you know, you can play around with this yourself and figure out what you like best. All right, so that is my bridge of choice. Again, play around with whatever you think will look best. You're gonna bring the terrain back up. Hold on to your butts. Bang, there you go. And again, I think that looks quite nice, especially from a distance. And what you can also do over here, you can see that it is quite raised up above the surface. I like that, you know, gives a little bit more protection, but you could, if you wanted, drop these down as well. So here, if we flatten from there, you can see that they are much lower into the water. So you can, you can sort of figure out what you, what you prefer with that. The next one I want to show you, which I think is pretty cute, is like a little stepping stone bridge. So we're gonna start on one end and we're just gonna take these, these rocks through the lagoon. And um, I've turned off random rotation here. So they stay like with the same flat side facing up that I selected, but I do spin them around to make them look a little bit different. And we're just going to take that again through the lagoon. You can just imagine that, you know, guests can 
playfully walk along these. This is something I would suggest for like a lagoon that has more peaceful animals in it, like maybe uh, just for the Arglon and the Ichthyosaur or something like that. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't do this with the Mosasaurus necessarily. There, what we can now do is maybe replace a couple of them with a different sized rock for a little bit of variation. There, we're just gonna add these smaller ones. And you can decorate this by adding bushes and you could even add um, actual decorations if you wanted. Again, just be sure to test how close you can get to that first lagoon. Because that's different depending on the, uh, the item you use. There. Now our rocks are a little, um, they're a little avatar-esque. So we want to sink them down. There, we have our little stepping stone bridge. Now it doesn't work quite as well on the edge, of course. You know, it's a glitch. There are limits. You need to use your imagination. But how you could hide the ends is, uh, you know, add, add bushes to it, an overhanging tree, just to sort of block it from vision from high up so it doesn't look too glaring. You can see the difference that that makes and you can pretend that guests can access it that way. And here you can see if we just move those three rocks a little bit further to the left, we could have added a second lagoon here. There you go. Now I was able to add my other lagoon at the end here. So we have our little stepping stone bridge right in the middle. There. Yet another way to implement this trick is to add a bit of fence. I, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head how low we can go with the fence. So again, make sure to test it. Oh, this we can, we can go this low. Let's see if we can go a little bit lower. There, so now we have a fence separating our two lagoons. And again, if we grab the terrain tool, we can take these down really far. They're sort of hovering in the middle here. There you go. That's nice. Let's get them back down again. There, you can sort of you can sort of pretend that your lagoon is separated into into two sections. Now your lagoon animals will just swim under here, no issue. Uh, they'll probably even swim through the fence. So it's not a functional separation. It's just a visual separation of two lagoon tanks. Now there's actually one more thing with the lagoons that you can do with this glitch and I will show you but I will show you a little bit later in the video because it combines this glitch with the monorail glitch and it's going to make a really awesome tour bridge for your vehicles across the lagoons. First, I'm going to show you some other stuff. I'm going to show you how to get a gate onto the guest path. Unfortunately, that is not a standard feature. If I were to grab a gate over here, let's grab the prettier gate. You can see that we can't make that work. However, using terrain elevation once more, we can trick the game into thinking that there's no collision with the hitboxes. So what we're going to do is this time around, we're going to grab an item that doesn't move up and down with the terrain. So for example, our container over here. As I've shown you as an example to dig down, that's actually exactly what you do. You dig down and then you get your path quite close to it. There's no exact science. Now we're gonna grab our gate again, this one, and we're going to hover it over the path. You can see that it's blue, place it, and there you go, the terrain comes up to the level that we place the container on. So if we flatten it out right there, we now have a gate on the path, which can just open and close as you please. So this is sort of like a security checkpoint or a security feature. You can section off your parks. The, the gate doesn't open and close automatically for guests or something like that. So you have to decide whether to leave it open and your guests will walk through or to close it and then your guests will not be able to come through. However, it does give you path connection. So you can close the gate and that means that nobody will use this path. But as you can see, the building is still connected to the arrival point. So there's no functional issues there. Oh. 
Over the course of more than two years, through free updates, Frontier has added many great decorative pieces. One thing they have unfortunately not added is a placeable vehicle. However, there is a way to get around that because, of course, we have vehicles with the ranger stations. So what you would do is you would, you would just put your ranger station in a corner like this where it's not going to get in the way of anything and you're going to drive your rangers out of the station. We're just going to get a little bit of distance because, of course, as you know, as soon as you release them, they will want to go back to the station. There he goes, he's he's making his U-turn and he's gonna go back. That obviously doesn't work very well if we want to place that in our parks, in in the location of our choice. There he comes, he, he wants to go back. We're gonna pause the game to stop them from doing that. And we're going to prevent them from returning to the station. And you can do that in many different ways. I just think the simplest way is to line it with fences. So there, I'm just building a perimeter around the station. We're gonna look at this Jeep. He was on his way back to the station and you can already see he can't reach destination. And he comes grinding to a halt, puts on the handbrake and he's gonna remain there. He's gonna remain there forever. And what you can do with that is really cool. You can just park him anywhere you want and he's just gonna stay there. And it works the same way with the other vehicles in the game. So for example, we have the MVU over here. It's a bit slower to drive around, but we can just drive that away from the paleo medical facility. We're gonna fence that in. There you go. And now when we hit play, he can't go back. There you go, can't reach destination. So you can park this wherever you want. And this is actually a pretty cool vehicle to park uh, at certain areas of your park. You could even pretend that it's a ambulance for, for people, for your guests. Another cool use for your Jeeps in your park is to have them as a destroyed decoration. Because now what happens is the people, the the driver and um, <laughs> the very bored looking man in the back, they're just going to be sitting in that Jeep forever. It doesn't matter if you reload the save file, the people are going to be in the Jeep, the Jeep is going to be wherever you left it. Um, so it doesn't quite work for that abandoned, destroyed Jeep look. Even though, even though we've made a good start here, but if you want to have a destroyed jeep, well, step one is, of course, to destroy it. So I've enlisted the help of an Indominus Rex to achieve that. Here she comes. Don't forget to turn on um, vehicle aggression, of course. And now it's just a waiting game for her to destroy this jeep. Off to a good start there. There you go. Vehicle destroyed. There, just took a couple of hits. Oh, it's a shame that she righted it. It would have been cool if she'd left it on its side. Our Jeep is now destroyed. The people are currently still in. They will eventually leave. Like, they'll just magically disappear. Uh, but as you can see, you know, it's destroyed. I can't move it anymore. I can't manually control it. Now, if you want to place this either in your park or uh, within an exhibit, you know, you might not like it wherever the dinosaur left it, but you can move it around to get it like into the perfect position. Maybe, for example, in front of your viewing gallery so your people can really, really see it. What you can do is with the invisible fence, you can scooch the vehicle around and you can get it into position you can also make it jump but that's neither here nor there there so you can put it right in front of the viewing gallery so you can create these cool views don't worry the people will disappear eventually <laughs> now you might be on an older console so you might not have the invisible fence in every error error sorry uh actually you definitely don't if you are on an older console but what also works is this thing right here and this is available to everyone in every era of course you do need the marine species dlc uh, but this is a workaround as you can see i can move it with the base of this rock as well unfortunately other stuff does not work it only seems to be the um the invisible fence and the rock platform so keep that in mind you either need to have the invisible fence or you need to have the rock platform in order to do that otherwise you're just gonna have to accept the placement wherever the dinosaur you know decides for you oh there you go there you go they're gone 
There you go. It just takes a while. You need to look away. But there, now you have an abandoned jeep in your um, in your habitat, which is pretty cool. You could also give it the like destroyed skin. I always forget. For my next trick, I'm going to be overlapping some rocks. So right now, if you place a rock, you can get it very close there like that and of course we know that this works as fencing around the habitat this will contain a dinosaur but there's a way to get them to overlap and what i'm first going to do is i'm going to draw a straight line that i want to follow with my rocks this just helps me personally uh, apparently i have trouble with like <laughs> a spatial awareness i like to draw a line with a contrasting terrain brush and now we're going to dig down there. Now we're going to grab the rocks again. I'm going to use this one mostly just because it's, you know, it's going to have the most dramatic effect. But if we do that, you can see that you can overlap it. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to waste too much time on this. You know what I mean, right? You need to uh, like alternate the orientation of the rocks a couple of times to make it look a bit more natural. But there you go. And now we're going to bring the terrain back up. Oh, and let's get rid of the snow. There. And now you have like a continuous overlapping rock wall. Now there's one decoration that has something interesting going on. And it's this one right here, the When Dinosaurs Ruled the Earth banner. You can see that the hitbox is like this really elongated rectangular thing. Interestingly, the banner itself, like the, the fabric, does not have hitbox. So if I turn it, you can cross them like this. And what this sort of creates, like it's still, you know, it, it, I, I place it not entirely perfectly. Uh, but you can make like a little a little cross section with it because you know, it's legible like this It's legible like this, you know as long as you get it like in the middle So now it's legible from four sides. I'm gonna try to do a bit of a better job at it Yeah, that's pretty good and yeah, this is like little cross sections So, you know, you can take your path through like that and then like that and you have a little a little intersection where from every angle you can actually still read the banner. And it doesn't just work with a uh, banner and banner action. You can clip other things into it. Here, this skinny thing, for example. Now, not quite sure yet how you would use it, but I'm just giving you the information. I'm giving you the tools. And uh, <laughs> I would love to see what you guys can come up with with stuff like this. As long as, you know, the item fits between these two concrete pillars, and it's tall enough, you can get it to clip into that. There. Again, I'm not quite sure yet how to use that. But I think this is pretty cool. It's like a little intersection. For this one, we're going to be building a lagoon. But it's not actually about the lagoon. We're going to be overlapping a building with a tour track so i have my lagoon and now i'm gonna dig down on one side of it and we're going for quite a deep trench for us to work with the next step is to actually grab a tour we're gonna go with this one and i'm going to lead that in a straight line through our trench so there she goes now this works with any building, but I think the combination of visitor center with the uh, the classic Ford Explorer tour is quite interesting. And what we want to try to achieve is get the the tour track more or less through the through the doors on either side of it. So there, I've placed it. I'm a I'm a little bit off, as you can see. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. <laughs> now I'm too far to the other side. Oh, it's pretty it's pretty good over here. <laughs> I think I think I'm going to accept that as like a um, just for the show and tell to show you how it works. Now, one of the unfortunate things is that we're quite low down. Now, in theory, if we were to go 15 lines up and start from there, 
we should end up at about ground level. You know, some of these tricks, they take some planning. The the one that I'm gonna show you at the end of the video, definitely, like, you know, there there's some steps to take into consideration. But that's okay. Alright, I think I'm just gonna go for that. Oh, that's pretty good. I'll take it. I'll take it. In terms of the elevation, we did a little bit better. It's 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 difficult to like plan this out perfectly because it's also going to depend on how you place your visitor center onto all of this. But, you know, this is a manageable difference in terrain elevation. And there come the tour vehicles. And now you've created the illusion that they come out of the visitor center. Like they go through the visitor center as a sort of station. Something cool we can do with our fences to make them look different and a little bit more unique, give us more variation, is we can overlap them. So what I've done here is I've just placed singular lengths like that, so I can I can show you. I find that the easiest and neatest way to go about it. But, you know, I've, I have my base fence and now I want to combine it with this fence right here. And the way you approach it determines how it's going to look. So if I attach it from this side and I go to that one, you know, we're not seeing anything on this end, but we are seeing the other fence on this side. You can see that they're they're just overlapping, but it looks really good. However, you know, if you if you want to specifically see the double fencing from this side, the sunny side, you just have to approach it from the other end. The starting point determines which fence comes on top or, you know, which fence comes in the front and which fence comes in the back like that and it works with all kinds of fences for example this one right here if we take it the other way you can combine it like that obviously you can also take these and combine them with this one i will show you that you can also make it work like this you just have to really be mindful there, see, it's only sl it's only slightly longer than the um, the individual fence length here, because see, you can tell that right now it is starting to curve in front of it, which is, you know, also looks kind of cool, but it's not necessarily what we what we want for this little little trick. Now, some fences, as you can see with this one, for example, you can see that this one, even at the very shortest length, it's already curving. So it doesn't work as well as some of the other ones, but actually looking at this, this also looks super cool. So yeah, that's something that I highly recommend you play around with if you want more fence variation, especially, you know, the concrete fence, it's the only one of its kind. So it starts to look kind of samey after building a lot of parks with, you know, or a lot of exhibits, I should say, with this fence type. So you can really mix it up and make it look different while still getting, you know, that that closed off look so people can't see through. The trick to get dinosaurs from the regular hatchery into the aviary is one of the most popular glitches in the game. I've covered this well over a year ago and um, the short that I've done on that has almost 600,000 views. It is a very popular glitch. So the steps are, these are the buildings you need. You need a regular hatchery, you need an aviary with hatchery, and of course you need to have them connected to an arrival point. We're first going to go into the aviary hatchery, synthesize dinosaurs, and we're going to filter it to new. And what that does is it, it just completely empties out the roster here. We're going to leave, and then we're going to move over to the regular hatchery. We're going to synthesize a dinosaur, and, you know, we're going to pick whatever species we want. I'm going to pick Euteraptor. All you have to do is click on the animal. So the tile is still lit up, no matter where we move the cursor to, the tile is lit up and you can see Euteraptor in the top right corner over here. That's all we're gonna do in here. We're going to leave the regular hatchery and we're gonna move back over to the aviary hatchery, synthesize dinosaur, 
and you can see in the top right corner it says Uteraptor. We can modify it just as we would in the regular hatchery, so we're going to make it yellow, one of my personal favorites. It's still right here, so now we're going to begin task. And as you can see, aviary hatchery, Uteraptor synthesizing, ready for incubation, select all. Incubating egg batch again in aviary hatchery number one. We're just waiting for it to finish. Release. Now, obviously, this is a little bugged. Or not, well, yeah, it's literally bugged. <laughs> it is a glitch, so, you know, the, the exit animation doesn't work perfectly. But here they come. Now, one thing you might note is that they are very quiet. And that is because of the coding of the in-game aviary. Uh, basically, what they've done is they've coded this aviary that if the camera is inside, you just don't hear dinosaur sounds. Because from Frontier's logic, if you're in the aviary, you're not supposed to hear dinosaurs because they are going to be outside the aviary. If that's something that really bothers you, you can use any of the other aviaries. Any of the wired aviaries. So of all the other eras... These will still give you dinosaur sounds if you release a dinosaur in there. So that's just something to keep in mind. And just for the purpose of demonstration, yes, it works in every other variation as well. You can release flying reptiles from the regular hatchery. You can release marine reptiles from the regular hatchery. You can release regular animals from the marine hatchery. You can mix it up however you want. Unfortunately, what happens after the release animation is what's going to cause some troubles. Now, the combination that works perfectly is releasing dinosaurs from the aviary hatchery and releasing flying reptiles from the regular hatchery. So I'll just show you. We're going to do the same thing. Filter. New. It empties it out. We're going to select a um, there, size large. Get rid of new. We're going to select the Quetzalcoatlus. Exit, move back over to this one, synthesize, there she is, Quetzalcoatlus, begin task. So we can do that. Um, of course, this glitch is no longer as needed because what you can do is you can just synthesize a Quetzalcoatlus or any flying reptile in the aviary hatchery and you can fly them out. You can just drop them wherever you want in your park release them into the wilderness this is maybe a little bit faster that might be the only advantage that this still has release and here comes the quetzalcoatlus there you go and now she's flea f flea flying <laughs> flea frying in the park again what you can also do uh, this should still be set to new yeah that's perfect so if we go in here and we select most source again just click on the tile leave we go to the regular hatchery synthesize there she is mosasaurus again we can modify if we want not gonna bother with that right now uh, but here now we have a mosasaurus th synthesizing in the regular hatchery we're going to continue with incubation as well so i can i can show you what happens when you release them we're also going to do the reverse here so again filter new we're going to go over here and we're going to select, um, here, we'll do the chonky one. It's selected. We leave. Synthesize. Here's Acrocanthosaurus. Begin task. So now we have an Acrocanthosaurus synthesizing in the lagoon hatchery. And, um, the result of this is not going to be what you think. Uh, and we're going to release this one in here. There it comes, just, you know, like Jesus walking on water. Now what it's doing right now is just the exit animation. And now the exit animation is over. And the dinosaur... It, it, the dinosaur's coding is obviously not compatible with the lagoon. So this is all that you're ever going to get out of it. It's just going to stand here forever. Like half sunken into into the water it's never going to move it's never going to do anything it's just going to do its idle animation of looking around i think it might roar sometimes but that's it it's never going to move if you think that's cool uh have fun with that that's awesome i think this is no added value honestly and the same with this ah the mosasaurus is releasing and you might be thinking um 
I don't see a Mosasaurus. And that is because the uh, Mosasaurus releases underground. So we can, uh, like, like, like paleontologists, we can dig her up. There she is. So if we were to delete that. There you go. If you so please, you can incorporate this into your park. Maybe you can pretend that it is an animatronic. Um, and you can incorporate it that way. But this is all it's ever going to do. It's just going to be swimming in air. It's never going to move. You know, it, it's very limited. And something to keep in mind is that, unfortunately, the hitbox is applicable. So it's also not like, you know, to, to sort of sell the animatronic idea. Um, what you what you might think to do is, for example, you know, if we, if we were to raise it up a bit, you can, like, have it propped up on these bamboo sticks. So it looks like it's supported. Or maybe on one of these. Uh, but we still have the hitbox to deal with. So you can't really... You can't get really close with it. So... Again, personally... I don't see much added value here, um, but some people have been using it as an animatronic or um, Crazy Cat Miri suggested it as a hologram. I've, I've, I'm not personally a super big fan of it, but again, you know, if you do have the creativity to make this work in your park, you now have the information to do that, so have fun with that. I have a lagoon with Archelon and Nothosaurus, and we're gonna build something so that on their own power, they can go in and out of the lagoon in a really interesting way. So first step is to dig down a little bit around the base of your lagoon or around the edge of your lagoon, just a teeny tiny bit. Then we're gonna grab water and we're going to get that as close to the edge of the lagoon as possible. The reason we dig down first is because if we don't, you see that there's quite a bit of distance. So you just want to make sure that you get it as close as possible. And now, very important, we're going to use the Lagoon Rock. Obviously for this trick, it involves the DLC animals, it involves the DLC rock. You need the uh, Marine Species Pack to make this work. This being that, as you can see, we can place this rock outside of the lagoon. Now, not everywhere, you can see it's red right here, but there are areas where it'll turn blue. So I'm going to place that. The placement and orientation of the rocks is very important for the desired effect. You can test yourself which position works, but rather than leave you to do homework, I've done some homework for you. This is the position that works really well with Archelon. Note that you can get it quite far away from the lagoon wall. Pay attention to the orientation of the rock if you want to copy this. This very noticeable ramp part is facing the lagoon wall. The edge of it pretty much lined up with the wall. As far as I've found, the Nothosaurus will only climb onto the rock if it touches the lagoon wall. And this is the placement that I think works best. Other placements I tested had the animals still clipped into the wall. I'm not saying these are definitely the only ways you can make it work. Again, through trial and error, you can figure it out. But I wanted to give you at least one concrete example for each for you to replicate. Here, we see an Archelon about to access our out of the lagoon, lagoon rock. Watch it happen in slow motion. He's into the concrete. Or she, and there she comes. She peeks out. And then, as usual, she's just gonna climb onto the rock. Now, because of that, you have to use a bit of imagination. It doesn't look entirely perfect, but when she's on there, it looks really, really cool. And the way you can, like, implement this is in several ways. You can build a guest area around this and let your guests get extra close to the Archelon and the Nothosaurus, you know, be able to see them like that as opposed to, you know, from a viewing gallery attached to the lagoon. You don't need to keep the water, by the way, you can just get rid of the water, so you have this effect. Now, something else, something interesting that you can do, and I'm gonna pause it so it'll stay there. You can build a habitat connected to the lagoon. You wanna be careful that you build it in a way that they can sneak out, but by doing this, what's really interesting is that you can have a combined habitat for a marine species, your Archelon and Nothosaurus, and one of the land animals. Like you can put you could put a Spinosaurus in here, or you can recreate the prehistoric planet scene with the T-Rex 
eating the Archelon on the beach. You know, you can combine them that way. All right, we've returned to the lagoon for a couple more tricks. Now, something that I think we all know is that you can dig down around the lagoon and you can expose this concrete wall, which I personally really like. I like using uh, differences in terrain elevation anyway, and I really like using the backdrop of, these, of this uh, concrete wall on occasion. The hitbox of the lagoon just goes straight up and down. What this means is you can overlap things with the concrete so you can see just how deep we can go with that so you can like like i'm doing right now you can blend some rocks into it maybe to you know make it look a little bit more natural there like that uh and this of course works with any decoration as well it ha it just has to do with the hitbox of the lagoon which is back a little bit so there we can we can have a torch mostly buried into it. Uh, it works with fences as well. So if I grab a fence, we can get that almost all the way in there. There, that's something you can do. But probably one of the most extreme ways that you can implement it. Let me dig around over here so I have a fresh wall to work with. Is that you can also clip buildings into it, specifically what might be fun is clipping a viewing gallery into this. So we're going to have it face the lagoon. We, we want to make sure that it's lined up. So I'm like looking at those dotted lines and that's pretty good. Now I'm going to pull it back. I'm being very careful with it so we can get it as close as possible. There, and you can see that the front of the gallery is completely buried inside the lagoon. And what this does is when you go into it, uh, oh, the placement is a little... <laughs> We can move it a little bit sideways because I think... There you go. See, you just have to move it around a bit, a little bit. Now, the view is a little weird because we're not getting the water effect. You know, we can see very far, which is quite unusual in the lagoon. But, you know, it works. And it's all about the illusion that we've created outside. So what we've basically done now is we've added an extra type of attraction to our lagoon with a direct underwater viewing gallery. Now, of course, yes, I know these viewing galleries also have an underwater function, but it requires the stand to go up and down. It also requires the building to be attached at the top of the lagoon. We don't have to do that. We can connect it like this, which I think makes perfect sense. Um, if you were to have a raised lagoon like this, I think you would have just low viewing opportunities going into it like that. So I think that's pretty neat. And now the last big glitch that we can use in so many different creative ways is what we've called the monorail glitch. So I'm going to show you the process from start to finish, the basics, and some of the creative and unique ways that you can use it to, um, to its best effect. So what we're just going to do first and foremost, I've, I've dug down a bit of a trench. You want to dig down so you don't have to go up with the terrain. So at uh, near the end, you know, your park is still going to be level. So I've placed my first station. I'm going to attach just a single length of track and I'm gonna put my second station on top of here. All right, so this is how we start. And now we're going to add more monorail. And there, I'm gonna pull it all the way to this end. We're just gonna move this one down the length of this monorail track, get more distance between the two stations. So delete the move tool, we're going to grab it and we're going to pull it away. And this is, it starts to give resistance and then you can see that the monorail bumps up. You don't want that. You want to keep it like at a distance that the monorail is still perfectly straight and you place it and then you grab it again and you move it again. Now here, this is interesting. We're going to get an obstructed by monorail station uh, error notification. Just, you know, place it as far as you can. And if I were to move it now, I can't get it any further. So you might think, oh, damn it. This is the maximum distance. Fret not, fret not. There is a solution to this. 
We just have to sort of reset it by pulling it to the other side. Now you might think, but Evo, um, how I've placed my stations, I don't want to extend it to the other side. No, no, you don't, you don't have to. We just need a little stretch and we're gonna move it just a tiny bit. And then we can move this again. It's just, it's just a little reset. So again, we're gonna create the maximum distance. We don't want that little bend. We want it perfectly straight. Oh, there, we place it. Pull it out even further. Again, make sure that you check that you're still ending up with a straight monorail track. There, so now we've created this distance. And what we do now when we grab the terrain tools and we go up, Normally, we all know what happens when you go up under a monorail. The monorail track itself goes up as well to maintain these ridiculously tall pillars, which is not necessarily what we want. What we've created now is a monorail that just like has a track that goes flat over the ground, which I think is pretty cool. And obviously you can like get it perfectly flat as well. There you go. This still works. The monorail will still drive over this, no problem whatsoever. It just creates a completely different look within your park. You just have a regular train zipping through your parks. Now, something fun to keep in mind because this monorail track does not have hitboxes with so many buildings in the game is that you can overlap some stuff. So for example, oh, I'm a little, I'm a little too low. There, this is a pretty good height. So you can get this log over the monorail track. Just gonna try to line that up nicely. Uh, what's gonna happen now is that the, the monorail train is just gonna drive through this, no issue whatsoever. So you can create a little bit of a tunnel like that. Or what you can also do is if you grab a decoration here, like this one, the monorail train will fit right through that. So that's also really cool. You can create like this secluded tunnel for your for your monorail. Have like some, some trees hanging over it. There, and that way you can sort of simulate also that tunnel effect. You can do lots of cool stuff with this because you can overlap stuff with the track. You can even overlap your path like this. So your guests can just walk over the monorail track. Now, occasionally they might, you know, uh, have a train phase through them, but that's not, that's not that big of an issue, I think. Now, if you want your crossing to be a little bit more realistic, what you can do is... There, hold on. Just gonna create a little a little base. I've made a, a cross first. So I can get it, like, at a, uh, at a perfect angle. Um, just be very careful not to delete any of your monorail track. Here, I have a station here. So we're gonna try to get that through. There, like that, we're just gonna get rid of the track. We can even get rid of the station. We can create different connection points, like different types of path, whatever you want. There, and now you have a realistic path crossing over your ground level monorail track. And obviously, instead of like having your track be exactly at ground level or having it at, you know, the massive elevation that it usually is at, you can create a custom elevation to your monorail track. So for example, maybe you like the monorail track at this height. Guests can still walk under this. There, so you'd have your you'd have your path go under. Guests can still navigate this and it looks it looks much cozier. It looks much more contemporary. So that's a really cool use as well. Now you can use this glitch in so many different ways. Like I said, I'm gonna show you a couple. Uh, for starters, something very exciting that you can do with this is you can create um, like a, a bit of a river crew. So if we grab our water and we put that on there, you know, if we incorporate that into an exhibit, maybe you have a train that goes over water. So you can sort of pretend that it's your river cruise. Something else you can do with it is have it go through the lagoon. So I'm gonna gonna raise the train up a bit. I'm gonna place a lagoon here. We can just place it over it. It has no hitbox. That's the beauty of this. This this monorail track is not going to get a hitbox with anything because it just wasn't it wasn't built for this. Frontier did not anticipate us doing this. <laughs> but there, you can already see that the track is now submerged.
now the next phase, the next creative step, is that we're going to use it without the monorail. And you might think, you know, your valid first concern might be, okay, but if we're not going to use it for monorail, I don't want the monorail buildings at either end, because that's really wasteful of space. And that is a very good point. Uh, and I'm going to show you how you can get rid of those. Okay, so if you don't want a monorail navigating your track, you're going to delete the stations. And it's going to cause massive panic because, oh my god, you just ruined it. You've ruined it completely. Oh no, it was all for naught. That is not true. What you can see very clearly is that you have this very steep in incline. There's like a section of the monorail track that basically does all of the heavy lifting when it comes to the difference in terrain. So what you do is you delete that specific section of track. This is the section of track that your station previously sat on top of. If you delete that, he comes back down. So you do it on the other end as well. Just the the raised bit. We have a little, little T left standing here. We can delete that as well. We don't need that. And now you just have the track, no stations. You can still do all of that. You can do your terrain editing and it doesn't affect the ele elevation of the monorail. We've sort of frozen it in time and place. One important thing to note is that this very end right here, if we raise the terrain up under there, we're gonna ruin it. So you don't wanna do that. You So you do need to leave a little bit of space to keep that and what you what you might do you can get it quite closely around it something like that and then you just grab a foliage brush there it's it's an unfortunate thing that you have to waste like this maximum like brush circle size of space but i think it's a small price to pay for a really cool effect what we're going to do now with this stretch is we're actually going to have our tour vehicles drive over the track as sort of a bridge for the tour vehicles. Um, something that is important to note is that this monorail track doesn't have a hitbox with buildings that can usually fit under a monorail. So, you know, this bunker, for example, can fit under it. A viewing gallery can fit under it. Uh, importantly for what we're going to do, a tour and the tour building itself can go under it. All buildings that can normally go under under a tall monorail track can go under this lower monorail track or on top of the monorail track, whatever you want. The only problem is buildings that usually do have collision with the monorail track. So for example, this building is so tall that the tall monorail track gives collision with this. You know, it can't go over the peak and you can see that right there. But because it is lowered now, we can sort of cheat the game into uh, like taking it through the end or we can take it over the front here. There, that's also pretty cool. Okay, so I'm gonna show you finally how to get the tour vehicles on top, uh, just in the way that I have found the easiest. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get it perfectly level with the um with the track now the way to do this the way to line it up properly is to look at the dotted lines going out of your tour building that's where the fence is going to connect not the tour itself but it's just a tool to line it up and what we want is we want those dotted lines to perfectly line up with the like the dark central line of the monorail track there's like a yeah there's like a darker line running through the middle of it and you want it to line up perfectly i think this is pretty good so that's what we're gonna go with don't place it like this you're gonna pull it back until the actual tour track so we're gonna angle it like this until the actual tour track and you can see it ever so slightly is lined up with that darker line there Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna lay down a bit of track and pay attention to what happens. The pillars disappear because of course this is also what happens when you have your tour uh, go under your regular like super tall monorails, right? The pillars always disappear. So that is a little unfortunate side effect, but it's not too big of an issue. I'm just gonna get rid of this building over here because I don't actually want it on top of my track. I don't wanna waste space on, space on that. So I'm gonna place a new building right here and connect it to the track I already placed. I'm gonna connect this up like that. There, give that a path connection so we can get our tour vehicles going. There, our tour vehicles are coming. I'm gonna slow them down a bit so I have time. Obviously, if they just follow this track right now, 
They're gonna go under the monorail track, and that's not what we want. We want them to go on top of it. So I'm gonna raise up the terrain. Uh, we'll take it from there, because this is like the perfect elevation. There, I'm gonna give them a nice ramp to get up. And then we're gonna cut into it like that. Now, this this long stretch without a, without a pillar support might look a little bit goofy. So what you can do is you can like use the terrain to create like little, little areas of support for it. There, so you can like minimize the stretch like that. Or you can use um, decorative stuff. So for example, if we grab a wall piece. Now we can't get it like directly under the, the, the monorail track because of course we have collision with the tour track, but we can get it quite close. There, so from a distance, it now looks like this is a support strut for your for your monorail track. You know, uh, solutions like that. Obviously from this angle, it doesn't look perfect, but you know, from most angles, this looks pretty good. Especially for example, if you have a viewing gallery that has a view of that. Viewing galleries are at the top, Evo. There, so from this angle, you know, from the ground angle, the guest angle, that looks perfectly fine. Here we go. Our tour vehicle is gonna drive up onto the track. Oh no, I'm very, I'm very, very, very lopsided. Whoops, I did not do my homework properly. This is gonna go wrong. Oh, <laughs> it, he just about made it, but I did not line it up properly. I'm gonna have to redo that. Uh, but you can see the effect in action here. You have the tour vehicles driving along the monorail track. Um, you have to be a little bit more careful than I was with the placement. You can see the closer we come to where I actually put my building. And that's that's how careful you have to be. Because it, it's pretty good over here. But over this long stretch. Like if the angle is just a tiny bit off. That's going to get more and more exaggerated. Uh, but you can see that at the start here. It's pretty decent. But yeah. I think that's pretty pretty cool. A cool thing that you can do with that. Finally, I'm going to show you how to make a functional tour bridge over a lagoon. And I'm going to show you two versions, a neutral version and a decorated version. The neutral version is a little bit easier. The decorated version has an extra step. The first step for this process is that we make a sunken monorail track, which I've shown you how to do earlier in this video. This is the very first step, and it's very important that if you want to recreate this and really any of these glitches in this video, you follow the steps in the correct order. Next is to place a lagoon over your monorail and we're going to get it about through the center of the circular lagoon section. So I'm just lining it up using the, uh, the dotted lines going around. So I'm going to place lagoon section here and I'm going to place an attaching lagoon section. And then the first one will delete because of course we're going to be needing the terrain elevation in order to make everything else work. So we're going to do the same thing that we did at the very start of our video. We're going to create a sharp incline. The next step is to place your tour. And you can do this with any tour. You can do this with the Ford Explorer, the Gyrosphere, the Truck Tour. I'm going to go with the Ford Explorer. I think this is pretty good. So that's what we're going to go with. Don't place it like this. You're going to pull it back until the actual tour track. So we're going to angle it like this until the actual tour track. And you can see it ever so slightly is lined up with that darker line there and now we're gonna drag him across we're going to drag it across our hill keeping it straight you can see that we veered off course a little bit but the uh, the truck should be able to stay on it is very difficult to line up perfectly over such a long distance just keep that in mind and now we go back and we grab our lagoon section and we're going to place it back where we placed it earlier you know we're just going to connect it to the first one and you can see that it's blue it's not giving any any hitbox error with the tour track so we can now place it and now we have a monorail bridge going across our lagoon with a tour track coming across it as well. Before we move on to our decorated version, I do want to highlight that this naked version, quote unquote, works with um, placing another lagoon section. You'll see that when we start decorating it, we're gonna veer into the hitbox of this one. 
So this is really cool if you just want like a bridge cutting right through the middle of a lagoon. And obviously, I, I'm using like this elongated shape. You can make it a different shape. For example, something interesting that you can do, and I think you already know where I'm going with this. There. You can have a double crossing uh, bridge. A double crossing bridge. Oh, but we can even do, that's fun, that's pretty. Let's connect them like this, so they go onto this little island. Uh, maybe if you make the island bigger, you can have dinosaurs walking on this island. You can see how, you know, when you sit on it for a little bit, brooding on some ideas, you can come up with some cool stuff and some different stuff, some variations with just this one trick. Now I'm going to show you that if you want a decorated version of your bridge, it's gonna get a little more tricky, because if we grab a decorative piece right now, so, you know, you, you, you'll you probably want to line your your bridge with, for example, these things. Obviously, you have the hitbox with the tour track. There's no way around that. So if you place that one right there, if you remember from earlier in the video, that is going to give an obstruction. So if you want a decorated version of this, you have to pull it back further. And that, that means that the steps are different. However, you could decorate this version with rocks. So for example, let's here, let's grab these and get them super close. There, if you recall from earlier in the video, the rocks have a different type of hitbox with the lagoon. So you would be able to do that and you can line your, your tour track and your, your monorail track with rocks. This also works the same with foliage. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work with um, with regular decorations, but you know, something like that to make it blend in a little bit is something that you could really easily do. You remember that for the undecorated version, this is how we placed it, with the monorail track cutting straight through the exact center of the lagoon, and we did that by lining up the monorail track with where the dashed lines intersect with the lagoon wall. So. I hope that the visual makes it clear what I mean. This is how we would place it for the undecorated version. For the decorated version, we're gonna have to pull it off to either side. So we're either gonna go to the right or we're gonna go to the left. I'm gonna go to the left for this example. Now we wanna stop looking at the dashed lines as a guideline because they're they're a little off on each side. Um, you can see that right here, the side that we're facing, the dashed lines are not symmetrical on either side of the monorail track. What is symmetrical, as you might notice, is the scaffolding that goes around the lagoon wall. It goes around in these uh, little segments and always, 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 whenever you line up your monorail track with the dashed lines, it's gonna be perfectly in between scaffolded sections on this side and on the other side as well. Let me let me actually flip it. <laughs> there, you can see on this side as well, the dashed lines and the two scaffolded sections are going like they're separated right at the monorail track. I hope I'm making sense. I think the visuals will help. And this is the same way for every, every area where the dashed lines intersect with the monorail wall. It's gonna be perfectly between two scaffolded sections. So the scaffold, are now our guidelines. So what you want to do now is you want to pull it off to either side. You can go either left or right. I'm gonna go left. Again, this is how we had it, straight through the middle. What we want to do now is go straight through the middle of the uh, of this scaffold right here. So this was the original placement. We're not gonna go straight through this one. We're gonna go straight through this one, through the middle. And you can see on the far side that we're also going straight through that scaffold section. We're gonna place our lagoon like that. We're gonna place our second section, delete the first. I'm gonna bring my tour track back in. There, we're gonna connect it like that. I'm gonna have to delete the building here uh, because of the placement, <laughs> so we can actually bring our hill back in. I'm just laying down the track. We're going to build the hill. Now we're going to grab whatever decoration that you plan on decorating your bridge with. So I'm gonna use these planters predominantly. I'm gonna get it as close as possible, like that. And you always wanna do a little test, just to be sure. There you go. And we have no hitbox interference here. So what you would then do is you would bring the terrain back down. All the way down. 
Just to give yourself a flat surface to work with, I find that that just works a lot easier. And then you can decorate your bridge however you want to decorate it. So, you know, you might want to line it with a couple of planters and then maybe break it up with a light. You know, and you would... Or, you know, you might do it symmetrically. Who knows? Maybe not. There's no right or wrong way to decorate your bridge. Just do whatever you think looks pretty, honestly. Okay, so I've really just very simply decorated my bridge. You know, this is all just for the purpose of a tutorial. If you're going to use this in an actual park, I would suggest that you get a little bit more creative with it than this. But when you're done, when you're happy with how your, your decorated bridge is looking, you're going to raise the terrain back up and you're going to grab your lagoon section and you're just going to attach it like like all the other times. So you can see it's blue. It, it's not giving like a hitbox problem so you can just place it like that now the downside of this uh, decorated bridge is that you can't attach another section as you see right there it says obstructed by tour track so there's no way to attach another section now it is obstructed by tour track so what you can do is have a decorated monorail bridge and then attach a second uh, monorail section because it's the tour track that's giving the issue. The monorail and the monorail train are not the issue here. Oh, I did, I did well enough. I did well enough. <laughs> Yay me. So we're going to place that one. So there you go. You do have a little double bridge area, which I think is pretty neat at least. This way you get a little bit more bridge out of a single lagoon. And if you want it to be two lagoons, you can just delete the section that connects them. I am not the one who discovered these glitches. I am just the messenger here. So a huge shout out to the glitch geniuses of the community. The ones who have YouTube channels I've linked in the description box. And I highly recommend that you check them out and show some support. And you never know what future glitches these geniuses might discover. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the glitches.